So a skin cancer examination starts at the top of the head and it's good to have the patient uh, ask their hair stylist or hairdresser, whatever the case may be, when they're washing the scalp to look for anything that's irregular or uh, something that perhaps the patient wasn't aware of to bring it to the patient's attention so that perhaps uh, their doctor can also evaluate if there's some hint that there might be some abnormality. But very methodically, we start at the top, and I prefer using a dermatoscope, which is a 10x uh, magnifying uh, special optical lens that allows us to see into the skin. And we're looking at high-risk areas where this gentleman has light eyes and has had his share of vitamin D, which is necessary as well with much sun exposure and damage over time. Actually, he's almost 98 years old. He looks terrific. Uh, he's a health nut and is an educator of many in that world of public health. Dr. Bob Korneski. 93 years old. Oh, 93, sorry. And so uh, we're looking at some very early subtle changes we call actinic keratoses. And there's a little subtle area here right in front of that ear that I don't think is a basal cell. I think it's just another actinic keratosis. So we may freeze those off uh, today, but we also want to focus on the embryonic fusion plane we call the post auricular sulcus. We find some subtle hidden basal cells in that tissue plane, and we're looking at both sides and st going down and looking even inside the ear. We've seen basal cells hiding in the contra bowl quite frequently the most common location for the most common skin cancer being basal cell carcinoma by far in my experience is on the nose and we're looking very closely at the nose and he has a little small actinic keratosis on the left tip of the nose and the cartilage underneath the nose when light shines against it is very translucent and it's often easy to miss a very subtle basal cell carcinoma that's growing within the skin on the nose. So it's, in my mind, important for high-risk patients that have had skin cancers in the past to at least take a minute to scan such high-risk areas, particularly the nose, the backs of the ears, and also the lower eyelids. We pull down on the eyelid and look at the integrity of the lower eyelid and eyelashes make sure there's no loss of eyelashes where a scarring like basal cell can be hiding looking at the lips under surface of the nose and certainly open please if there's a smoker we prefer also to do a oral examination to make sure there's nothing that's obvious to our eye looking down further onto the neck and I think he just nicked himself shaving. He has an irritated keratosis that's really more of a nuisance than a danger that I think he would like to have off. And then going down to the hands and looking at the nails and the nail beds, looking for funny abnormal areas of pigmentation or anything that otherwise is fairly new or different. I think he had a basal cell on his chest here and that scar looks fine, looking for recurrence there. A couple of benign looking nevi, which are rather typical without concern. Checking the other arm as we go and the hands and the backs in the front, the palms of the hands all look fine. The abdomen's fine. And we'll sit up and we'll swing legs to the left and scan the back of the neck and looking at the back from a distance he really doesn't have a lot. We're looking for something that doesn't belong but I don't see anything on him that stands out as even remotely uh, concerning. He does have a couple scars from previous 
surgery where a basal cell carcinoma was removed there and one, a very superficial one, frozen there. And I don't see any evidence of recurrence there. So let's swing back around and take a look at the lower half. So we've started from the top and, uh, and gone to the waist. And now we're going to start at the feet and looking at the bottoms of the feet and between the toes and looking under the nail beds to ensure there's no abnormal pigmentation that could possibly be a subtle melanoma. We know melanoma can occur in non-sun exposed areas and that Bob Marley was one that actually died of a melanoma on his foot and so uh, that's not something we want to move. We'll come on and step off and if you would let me just take a look at the front side examining all areas ensuring there's nothing hiding. Uh, in fact I see nothing at all. <laughs> it's not nice. Well, most of the women that we live with are rather challenging and tend to be sort of what we call trained women in the school of Lorena Bobbitt, and so you just never know uh, when they're going to strike.